Hi everybody, uh, welcome back to Under the Cuff. Uh, today we'll be going over the Rolex Oyster Perpetual 39. So, I've had this watch for about a year now, actually exactly a year now. And uh, I'll go over a few things that I like and, and don't like about the watch. Uh, there isn't much that I don't like about the watch. Um, I still have, I guess, the same feelings I had when I first picked this watch up. Um, I'll take it off of this just to make it easier to hold. And I'll give you a sample of what it looks like on the wrist. So this is what it looks like on the wrist. Um, and actually, we'll start off with what got me thinking about this watch, which is the dark rhodium dial. So at first glance, you'll notice the dial color. It's a dark rhodium dial with blue hour markers on the outside. And depending on the lighting and the angle in which you look at the watch, the dial can appear as light as silver or as dark as black. So, <clears throat> next things that attracted me to this is the 18 karat gold uh, hour indices, and uh, and I like the balance of the loom along with the crown as well. So, one thing that I wish I well not wish that I had I could have gotten gone for a date just, but uh, I do find the lack of a date kind of um, strange at times. I always check my watch for the date. And whenever I'm wearing the Rolex, I always have to uh, switch to my cell phone to get the date for whoever is asking. Um, so it has a polished bezel, which I find actually, uh, even though they're using uh, the 904L stainless steel, it I find that it does get scratched up quite easily. So if you take a look at the clasp, you can actually see all the little marks there. And... If I can get it to focus, oh, you can see some scratches there. Um, I found that, I, well, I was thinking that maybe if it was all brushed steel, then you wouldn't notice it as much. Uh, one thing I did not like from Rolex is that they give you a watch, but uh, they don't add a tool. I think for the amount of money you're spending, they can give you a tool to... Uh, do micro adjustments if you need to, or just add the glide lock clasp to all their watches. Another thing I don't like about their clasp is uh, this gets stuck to my wrist quite often, especially if it's hot outside, and it will get stuck and it will be very hard to rotate. Um, but other than that, it's a great watch. It keeps great time. Um, the movement is uh, 3132 movement um, in house by Rolex. It's the same movement that they use for their explorers, so you know that it's tough. And, and like all Rolex movements, um, it undergoes the Swiss Official Chronometer Testing Institute, so it's COSC certified. Um, <clears throat> now, on to measurements. As the name suggests, Oyster Perpetual 39. The dial is 39 millimeters, uh, lugs are 20 millimeters, uh, the thickness is 11 millimeters, and lug to lug is 47 millimeters. So all in all, measurements are great. Fits great on the wrist. Um, it fits, the thickness is good enough where you can wear it with a dress shirt, no problems. And with this watch, it's understated yet sophisticated. So. You can wear it with a suit and tie or with shorts and a t-shirt. In either scenario, it's going to look great. It doesn't look out of place with anything that I wear. And people always ask me if I have any regrets spending the amount of money I did on this watch, and I have none. It's very versatile. It's very comfortable. Um, there are a few things that I wish were different, uh, such as um, Rolex adding tools. If I wanted to change the bracelet, for example, um, find it very, very difficult to do. Uh, there is a tool uh, that are kind of like tweezers that Rolex uses to adjust this. And I um, find it very difficult if I didn't have that tool. 
Also, doing micro adjustments is quite annoying as well. Um, I don't really want to go to um, Rolex AD every time I want to get that changed. I, I do use a tool, but um, it does take me longer than other watches. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.